Sam Bateman Freed is back in jail. Previously, he was living in a multi-million dollar house on house arrest, but according to prosecutors, he's been using that time to tamper with witnesses twice, which, you know, is highly illegal, but I guess who knew a guy who stole billions of dollars couldn't be trusted. But even more surprising is learning the fact that he apparently has been talking about this show in between tampering with those witnesses on house arrest, which who are going to talk about. But first, if you're just catching up with what's been going on with SBF, it's been a while, and here's the 30-second recap since we talked. Sam Bankman fried committed the largest financial fraud since Bernie Madoff, and he's a terrible League of Legends player. So, you know, already two strikes, but it gets worse because he proceeded to go on the world's most annoying apology tour after that, talking to everyone. Please ask him if he thinks the thinks what happened was fraud. I mean, I'm deeply sorry about what happened. A lot of people look at you and see Bernie Madoff. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's who I am at, at all. The reason it was so annoying is that Sam kept repeating how sorry he was that none of it was his fault. $8 billion from his company went missing and he has no idea how it happened. He blames it all on his ex-girlfriend he hired, but that's not his fault either. He even tried selling that story to me back in December and accidentally admitted that he may have been co-mingling funds, which is a huge no-no. And when he admitted that, uh, he got really mad at me and he said this. But you have monopolized all of these discussions, CoffeeZilla. You need to let others speak and you need to respond to what I'm saying and not grandstand as much here. Now, I'm sad to say that is where me and Sam officially got off on the wrong foot. And that will play into the story later. But six days after my grandstanding, Sam himself would be grandstanding in handcuffs because he was arrested in the Bahamas and then extradited over to the United States where he faced 13 charges. Uh, mostly it was fraud, but there were some campaign finance charges in there as well. Because get this, in between orchestrating billions of dollars being siphoned from customers, he also had the audacity to try to buy, um, you know, the government. Republicans, Democrats, it didn't matter. He wanted to buy their influence for the laws he wanted to pass, which is a story, by the way, which we broke with the citizen journalist Tiffany Fong. Here that is. You need about the same amount of here. No matter how you slice it, things were just looking bad for Sam at this point and good for truth, justice, and the American way of waiting until billions of dollars are stolen before you do anything. And since we last talked, mostly things have remained the same, although there have been some changes that for Sam have been a mixed bag, legally speaking. For example, his team got five of the charges against him delayed to a future trial. Not only that, they almost got the campaign finance charges dismissed on a technicality until they didn't. But most importantly, and the biggest problem for Sam is that he can't seem to stop breaking his bail conditions and getting caught doing so, which brings us to today. See, when you get out on bail, you're essentially making a promise. They won't lock you up, but in return, you gotta follow some basic rules. You know, you gotta be where they tell you, you gotta show up to your trial, and you can't do certain things. You know, like commit crimes, contact witnesses, or for instance, try to call the press a thousand times and send a hundred emails to the media to try to manipulate the narrative. Can you guess which one Sam broke? It actually got so bad, by the way, that the judge had to tell SBF to stop contacting potential witnesses with encrypted messaging apps, which led to him getting banned from smartphones, which um, somehow he still managed to call these reporters and apparently then proceeded to leak the private diaries of his ex-girlfriend, Caroline Ellison, who, by the way, is going to be testifying against him in this trial and was a key figure as she ran Alameda Research. This, by the way, is what you call witness tampering. And it was the final reason that SBF's bail was revoked after he repeatedly violated it. Allegedly, he had over 100 phone calls with that New York Times reporter who then wrote this story. Inside the private writings of Caroline Ellison, star witness in the FTX case. And I don't think it takes a genius to realize why the lead suspect in a criminal trial leaking damaging documents to the New York Times about the star witness against him is so obviously wrong. Now he's back in jail. Although he's not gonna have to wait long because October 2nd is when his criminal trial starts. 
which you can guarantee we will be covering extensively. I've been waiting for this moment since the day I heard Sam Bankman fraud might go to prison for the rest of his life. But, you know, I was surprised to find out that Sam hasn't stopped thinking about me either, according to a leaked phone call we received. I apparently have a strange relationship with this guy I wasn't even aware of, which is only the second most surprising relationship I found out Sam had this year. Just recently, we discovered in one of his 1,000 phone calls to the press, he talked to the reporter Tiffany Fong, who we mentioned earlier we have featured, and he name-dropped me, CoffeeZilla, as someone he particularly hates. Yeah, no, that was, uh, 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 that was... Oh, the other one I really hate, the, I think it's Coffee Solo, the guy who yelled at me for associating with bad people. Now, I'll be honest. I feel horrible about this. Did I yell at Sam for associating with bad people? How could I do that when he only created the biggest fraud since Bernie Madoff? The poor guy, his feelings are clearly hurt. Guilt by association, it's just not fair. But I did wonder who specifically was he upset that I brought up. He gave two examples. Was the Dan Friedberg? Dan Friedberg and Mark Cohen were his examples. How dare I use examples of Dan Friedberg being hired at FTX as their chief compliance officer? You know, Dan being a notorious lawyer known for covering up a cheating scandal in poker, where they apparently had a backdoor god mode where one player could see the other player's hands and no one knew about it. How could that possibly be relevant? that the same guy who covered that up was also hired to Sam's company, which now we know had a secret backdoor used to steal money from FTX customers. Could it be that he was hired for his past, not in spite of it? Or maybe it's just coincidence that the same guy is now being accused in a new lawsuit of paying, quote, exorbitant hush money to a former FTX employee. All I pointed out was that hiring Dan Friedberg as your compliance officer makes as much sense as hiring Jack the Ripper to work in a woman's hospital. It doesn't happen on accident. But now I also want to talk about the other person he mentioned, Mark Cohen. I simply pointed out that it's the same lawyer who defended Ghislaine Maxwell, you know, the, the trafficker associated with, uh, you know, you know who, which, you know, I'm not saying that hiring a criminal defense lawyer who defends the worst criminals makes you the worst criminal. Just like I'm also not saying that hiring a compliance officer who allegedly covers up potential crimes means you're covering up potential crimes. But I am saying that Sam really knows how to pick his lawyers. My boy really assembled the dream team. You know, it's like he hired the Legion of Doom and now is saying, hey, why are you bringing that up? Why is that relevant to whether I'm involved in Doom-related activities? But you know, why am I really even defending myself? I suppose it's kind of a badge of honor to be hated by this guy, this fraudster, this bronze tier trash. But I can't help but feel a little sad that me and Sam have grown so far apart since the days I would ambush him in Twitter spaces. So I wanna continue the dialogue here, the strange relationship me and Sam have together, because look, I know he watches the show, he talks about it, and apparently is being allowed a laptop in prison for some reason. So I thought I'd take this moment to offer a short message to Sam himself. Uh, hi, how's prison? I hope you're hating it. And I look forward to covering your trial. That's the truth. I'll try not to grandstand so much this time for your sake. Oh, and give me a call sometime. I mean, a thousand calls to the media and I don't get one, Sam? What the hell's wrong with you? I thought we had something special. Text me on Signal. They'll never find out. <laughs>